Welcome to Full Court Fits, the show that takes you around the world of NBA fashion while also bring you the latest, greatest, biggest news of sneaker culture today. I'm Big Waz, and I'm joined by a very special, special group of individuals, man. These brothers have founded The Mintage. It's a really cool NFT joint within the vintage space, uh, which I know a lot of people are going to hear that and be like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> but <laughs> that's why you guys are here. Nick Adler, Sean Witherspoon, Brennan Russo. What's going on, y'all? What's up, what up man? What up? Thanks for having us. Yeah, no, it's wild. I did want to get into some of the stuff that you've been teasing on social um, because people are really excited about it. I was watching my homies over at Complex, uh, Welty, Brendan Dunn, Joe LaPuma. Shouts to all those guys. Those are my dudes. Um, I think Welty said he spoke to you and you said, you know, these these motherfuckers think I'm a one-hit wonder. I'm going to show them yeah. how busy I get. So, like, tell us tell us why you're excited about these shoes, man. Because I'm not going to lie. These teasers got me pretty excited. Look, I am always excited about my sneakers. Every fucking time. I am, like, <laughs> leaving it with my final sample. And I'm like, this is the best shoe in the fucking world. Like, I just love my shit because I really put my myself into it. Like I really put what I love into these sneakers. Man, to see people's reaction on like the Gazelles and the yeah, Arquetro, dude, this is so validating. It feels really good. I'm getting Air Max vibes again, just on mm. like the community mm. coming together. And man, I love that shit, dude. I really, really love it. It feels so good. Like it's, it's always hard to, you know, see negativity on Instagram and stuff and just have yeah. to overlook it. I think it's going to be like, in the consumer's eyes, my best year in sneakers ever, wow. 2023. So can you can yeah. you break some news here on Full Court yeah. Fits with us? Break break some news, right. Sean. Let's do it. I got you. No <laughs> release date uh, has been announced yet on these, but I'll go ahead and give it to you January. So we'll oh. say uh, this is going to be a mid. This is going to be a mid January okay. release. Okay. So get those wallets ready, please. You know, don't Let's go, go. spending too much this holiday season. Straight, straight from the from foot. The foot. <laughs> you know, I'm wearing those babies. That's how I do it? Do you have the 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 gazelles with you or no? I don't. But hold on, I got someone else. Here's another gazelle. This one's about a year out. Ooh, ooh. These are made 100 percent of hemp. On the upper, I love it. So that's I love a sick it. So one. these are so these are about a year out. These are a year out. You well, want to see happening mid January? These will yeah. be about a year. We're not going to talk about these again until you're into NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> so same timeline. Same timeline. <laughs> uh, I love it. So many things have happened in the blockchain, the crypto, the NFT space. If you're trying to get somebody to get into it, like reading all of this stuff on CNN and MSNBC and all of these places, it's quite scary. But, you know, when 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 this thing came across my desk, I thought this was pretty cool because one, um, especially Sean, uh, him being somebody who Literally, this is his world, vintage items and clothing. Like, this is organic to stuff that he's already involved in. Um, just the idea that you guys would be trying to do this in Web3, um, in the NFT space, how, how did this even come about? I can start by just telling you that in terms of everything you're saying, it, you're spot on. Like, I'm someone who has a background for many years working with artists and talent. Um, spent over a decade working next to Snoop Dogg and being connected to him. I understood branding endorsement and early early adoption of new tech. And when I saw Web3 come along, I was like, this is a really important moment. We've allowed big companies like Facebook and Instagram, you know, we've built them off of our, off of our digital backs. And, you know, they own our data. And so what excites us in, about Web3 is the fact that, you know, we can start to take that control back. So what we're doing with Mintage is we're actually applying something the, as the software of Web3 to build something as a big, a big business that applies to the vintage world. And whether it's using NFTs to track that or using blockchain as a ledger, that's where we're thinking about it. The background is I walked into round two, Brennan introduced <laughs> to Sean about a year and a half ago, walked in the store, kids are coming in, boom, 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 buying 100, 200, 300, $500,000 t-shirts. You know, after that, I, I kind of started to like dig into it a little bit more. And everything he said a year and a half ago was spot on has come true from what was on trend to like Carhartt double knee pants to, you know, why certain t-shirts were holding value. And when he pulled the tees off the wall, he started talking through it from the fading to the tags 
to the to the artwork to the bootleg better being more important than the original. Wait, so you telling me when I go outside the concert and those homies are selling the tees unofficially, I should get those too? Buy them. Wow. Buy them and sit on them. Buy them and sit on them. I went to one of Kobe's last games. All the dudes outside of the Lakers stadium were selling mad tees, mm-hmm. dope ass tees. Then unfortunately, a couple of years later, Kobe had passed and those same t-shirts, people were selling them for crazy money. Those were bootlegs made by somebody, but then they held such a high regard in our heart after Kobe had passed. Speaking to what Nick was uh, speaking on, you know, when me and him first met and I'm kind of describing to him these t-shirts, trying to like gas why they're actually worth the price tag. You know, I go into this whole deep hole of the textures and the materials that were used and a certain fade or the graphics cracked in a certain way. And I like looking at vintage sometimes where I'm like, this is perfect. This is like what H&M is trying to recreate in their distressed graphics. Mm -hmm. Sometimes vintage looks so good, it almost doesn't look real. Cause you're like, man, like this is so good. Now I need to understand the vintage part of this because how do you manufacture that uh, within the NFT space when everything yes. is digital and you know, you know the skeptics they're gonna say no, I love it. you could right click this damn Chanel and I'm recreate it in, yeah. in two seconds. Everything that we wear, it's really like a billboard for us and we want right. you to look at us without having to say any words and know who I am. I mm. want my outfit every day to express who I am, you know? And that used to be something that was only for like the fashion streetwear, you know, like heads, but now it's everybody. People in the mainstream are investing in vintage. And if they're not investing in vintage, they think they are. And they're investing in a fast fashion brand or a retro style that is based off of vintage. And because our physical world's heading in this direction, we know yeah. that this is gonna be what people need in the digital. That's what we're coming to create is a whole different perspective on what Web3 actually is. More real life, more personality, more character more approachable. What's so fascinating is we're in the like iPod era of hardware. And so one of the reasons too was a little hard to grasp is that you haven't even got to the iPhone yet. And so we're ahead of this thing and and the people and our peers that are also doing this are ahead of this thing. And it's going to take a minute for mainstream to really truly catch on. But that true adoption is going to be when Apple comes out with their headset and you see other people start to be onboarded through a bigger hardware vehicle. I want to go back to something though, Sean, because yeah. the last time I had you up here, we we had a conversation about accessibility to the goods that you like to yep. put out that have your name on it. How are you trying to strike that balance with this individual project, right? Like, do, do you still yep. want your shoe to be highly accessible? Do you want people, an everyday person, wherever they are in America, let's just say Wyoming, who happens to be yeah, a fan yeah. of, you know, your personal taste, can they be able to get their hands on these Web3 products? The collection that I'm gonna be launching off uh, with us at Mintage to begin with, Uh, It consists of a handful of vintage pieces that I literally hold the only ones in the world of. They don't exist anywhere else. I've never been able to share these with anyone and I'm super selfish with them. This is my way to now give everybody in the world access to these through a digital version. I think that we're putting out a pretty fair number of, you know, of these uh, NFTs to mint. Everything is very like, it's like gate kept. You know what I mean? There's gatekeepers and like all these different worlds, whether it's sneakers, whether it's, you know, Web3, NFT. And I think with Mintage, it's like, look, we're super transparent. I think the accessibility is going to be really great in multiple perspectives through the Mintage project. And that's like definitely a goal of ours. Um, Sean, I'm not going to lie, man. I think your enthusiasm for this stuff is infectious. Uh, Obviously, you have great taste. You put a ton of work and thought into all of the things you do. So I hope this thing works out for you guys. Thanks so much. Brennan, thank you guys. All right, that was our show for today. Uh, Make sure you're subscribed to The Ringer's YouTube page. Hit that notification bell so you get alerted every single time we drop a new episode every single Friday. And don't worry, next week, I know it's the holiday, but we are coming out with our Sneakers of the Year episode. So make sure you tune in next week as well. We'll see you guys. Peace.